Previously, we talked about the new style that the new Power Rangers universe could have in the reboot and according to information on the internet, the new series is supposed to be aimed at a young adult audience. This has brought the question to many fans of what is going to happen to the kids. For 30 years this franchise has been aimed at a children's audience and many of us who watched the series as children are now adults but are still fans of the franchise. Despite this, kids are still going to be around, and they are still a pretty wide audience. We have made it clear many times on this channel that kids don't watch as much TV as they used to as they are now engaged in watching platforms like YouTube, Netflix, and Disney+. On these platforms there is content that is very different from what exists on television, although we can say that Netflix and Disney have content that is quite similar to what a child might find on local TV channels. Despite the fact that many children do not watch television, even so, this audience is still very large, and we can notice this in the different platforms. For example, on YouTube it is known that several of the YouTubers with more subscribers are children, even the YouTuber with the most exponential growth is a girl and not even Mr. Beast grew so fast. Another sign that we have as a way to know that the children's audience is super wide is the Pixar movies because although in recent years the movies have not been so successful, the reality is that it is not for lack of audience, but for other reasons. Previously we have talked about Power Rangers can be transformed into an animated series, but the reality is that at that time we had talked about something that is still for adults. On this occasion we are going to analyze the idea of an animated series, but one that is completely for a children's audience and that has the appropriate style to be successful. Obviously, the anime style is proven to be very successful, but the reality is that the audience for this style are teenagers and this audience is the most difficult since they are the ones who want to be playing video games all day long. Power Rangers is created for an audience between 4 to 8 years old more or less, so in order to capture the attention of this audience you need a style similar to Pixar. Obviously, Pixar's movies are impressive in their graphics, and this is very expensive for a franchise like Power Rangers, but what we want to look for is a style similar to that. There are many children's shows that have a style similar to this and don't invest as much in graphics, so this is not impossible to get. The good thing about having a style like this is that the special effects are not going to be so exaggerated and maybe the story can seem more real. Besides, we have already seen that this style has captured the attention of many children because besides the fact that Pixar has very good stories, the style is also part of that success. A style that many people have recommended is that they are cartoons, but with the modern style that is created today. A good example of this is the Ninja Turtles, which have a modern design, but do not lose the essence of the series. Series like this have managed to capture the attention of the audience and Power Rangers can have that same attention if it uses that modern cartoon style. There are really a lot of design styles they could use, but what would be the story style? I think they could really use all the stories that we have seen over these 30 years, and they can modify them to match the graphic style. This would be a great advantage because they could use the stories that have worked best and basically it would be like going down a safe road. This reduces the risks of failure and helps them to have a faster final product. Also, using old stories may cause some adults to watch the animated series because they will be curious to see their favorite teams in a different style. If they don't use the old stories, they could still use the teams that have already existed in the franchise and with this they get a lot of advantages as well. One big advantage that an animated series using the old teams would have is that they can create epic moments by combining different teams in the same mission, something that is very difficult to achieve in a series with real actors as this entails more expenses, more time, and more difficulties to convince all the actors. This is the same thing that happened in a special episode, 
We did not have Tommy and Kimberly because the producers could not convince them to participate in this project. I know many will think that Tommy didn't appear because of the actor's death, but the filming was done before he passed away and the real reason he didn't appear was because he didn't want to. This is something that will never happen in an animated series since they only need the voice actors and the worst thing that can happen is that they have to change the voice of a character. By the way, that is another advantage, the voices of the characters, since in a real life series, everything is more complicated, and this sometimes affects the final product. For the real life series, you have to look for an actor who has the right physique to play a fighter, he must also have good acting, good voice, and charisma. For voice actors you only need a good voice and good acting since we are not going to see that actor. There are many excellent voice actors who don't have the physique to play a superhero and also don't have the age to play a ranger. However, those same voice actors have impressive acting to play a cartoon character and sometimes the result is even better than the real-life actors. Speaking on this same topic of voice actors, there are also dubbing actors and the end result is better when they are animated series. The way a real person moves his mouth is not the same way a fictional character moves his mouth when he speaks, so the dubbing to other languages is not noticeable when they are animated characters. We must also say that sometimes the voice actors in other languages manage to do a better job than those who did the original voice, something that never happens when it is a series with real people. We have seen this in movies like Shrek and also in Kung Fu Panda, which had an impressive Spanish dubbing, even with a better result than the original English voice. What I'm going to say now we already talked about in the other video about a Power Rangers animated series, but here it will also have that advantage. An animated series that is created for children will also have the advantage that they can put the characters in any place they want, because in the end it will have the same cost. When a series with real people wants to have a scene in difficult locations, this entails a higher budget and sometimes they cannot create these scenes due to lack of money or logistics. An animated series doesn't have those obstacles since they simply have to draw those places and that's it. Obviously, this depends on the style of the series, since in a style like Pixar's it is a little more complicated since creating cities in 3D is very different because it involves a lot of details and a great effort. The most important of all this besides the style, graphics, and advantages, is the platform they use to publish the series. For now, we know that Netflix is the platform that is publishing the Power Rangers projects, but I think the best platform for a project like this could be YouTube. Write in the comments if you think an animated series for kids is a good idea, like this video and subscribe for more Power Rangers animation.